morning prayer, we will be using proper eight in your daily devotional, the Psalm 119 and the following readings. We will also use the family prayers on the back of the voice to remember those people in prayer. Let us sing. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship the Lord. Come, let us sing together. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship the Lord. We pray together Psalm 119. The psalm is prayed responsively, whole verse by whole verse. With my whole heart I cry. Answer me, O Lord, I will keep your statutes. I cry to you, save me, that I may observe your decrees. I rise before the dawn and cry for help. I put my hope in your words. My eyes are awake before each watch of the night, that I may meditate on your promise. In your steadfast love, hear my voice. O Lord, in your justice, preserve my life. Those who persecute me with evil purpose draw near. They are far from your law. Yet you are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are true. Long ago I learned from your decrees that you have established them forever. Look on my misery and rescue me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me, and give me life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to your justice. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries, yet I do not swerve from your decrees. I look at the faithless with disgust, because they do not keep your commands. Consider how I love your precepts. Preserve my life according to your steadfast love. The sons of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous ordinances endures forever. Princes persecute me without cause, for my heart stands in awe of your words. I rejoice at your word, like one who finds great spoil. I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous ordinances. Grant peace those who love Grant peace have those who love your law. Uh, nothing can make them stumble. I hope for your salvation, O Lord, and I fulfill your commandments. My soul keeps your decrees. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and decrees, for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips will pour forth praise, because you teach me your statutes. 
My tongue will sing of your promise, for all your commandments are right. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let me live that I may praise you, and let your ordinances help me. I have gone astray, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek out your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. First reading. First reading is by Samuel, chapter 12, 1 to 6, and 16 to 25. Samuel said to all Israel, I have listened to you in all that you have said it. Now therefore, take your stand and see this great thing that the Lord will do before your eyes. Is it not the wheat harvest today? I will call upon the Lord that he may send thunder and rain, and you shall know and see that the wickedness that you have done in the sight of the Lord is great demanding a king for yourselves. So Samuel called upon the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day, and all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. All the people said to Samuel, Pray to the Lord your God for your servant, so that we may not die, for we have added to all our sins the evil of demanding a king for ourselves. And Samuel said to the people, Do not be afraid. You have done all this evil. Yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And do not turn aside unless useless things that cannot profit or save, for they are useless. For the Lord will not cast away his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you a people for himself. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you, and I will instruct you in the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart, for consider what great things he has done for you, but if you still do wickedly, you shall be swept away, both you and your king. The word of the God, out of Lord, sorry. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Acts chapter 8. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, so that anyone on him I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain God's, first, God's gift with money. You have no part or share in this, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord, that if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and the chains of wickedness. Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord, that nothing of what you have said may happen to me. Now after Peter and John had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, proclaiming the good news to many villages of the Samaritans. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our third.
third reading today is from Luke chapter 23. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowns, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all of Judea from Galilee, where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by vehemently, accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us stand and pray together the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and, and grant, grant us your salvation. salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let, Let your people, people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known among earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you protect me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, 
that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us now sit as we pray the intercessions of the congregation. Gracious Father, we come to you this morning with thankful hearts, thankful most of all for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, our brother. And now we bring these loved ones of yours into your presence, Father, to heal and give hope. Let them feel the power of your peace and love that is surrounding them. Guide them in the way you would have them go, Father. And as we name each name, we just visualize them in your arms. Hey, good old. Ray Claire Johnson. Jennifer Gibb Horzel, Grace Lang, Richard Erno, Karen Brosma, Mary and Olga Lembria Lopez, Herb and Teresa Shakerman. Francis Looneyball, Michael, Mickey, and all of Maria's family, Matthew Horsnell, and Carl Johnson. Gracious Father, we leave them in your hand. Amen. Dear Lord, we meet today Needs your help and 
so to speak, also being a caregiver needs to know representation and how um, the joy of seeing him be repaired. The Ryan family. We don't know how many in the family, but we pray for the whole family. We like to pray for Maria and her family and people in our building that would have over us in the last week. son passed away about you know, three months ago at the age 34 and her husband just passed away also dear Lord we bless Maria she's worked so hard she's had so many deaths in the family and she is not a member of our church but she's a very good Catholic person who knows that she and she knows where you are to pray about she's a sweet woman she gave a lot of help to people when she was We ask that you bless the Danahan family. All these things, dear Lord, we ask in the, in the assurance that you will help them, dear Lord, in any way they need. And we bless them, and we ask you to help them all. We ask this in your name, dear Lord. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together this morning. Small, but our prayers going right up to you, dear Lord Almighty. We know that that our prayer group has helped people with friends and feedback, and we do know that, that people know that we're praying for them. Sometimes that's just a big comfort. People know that that they're being prayed for. We pray today for Maureen, for Becky Young. Sue Lignell and her husband Jack Martin, for Diane Glenn, for Cameron, very young boy, for John Paul, for Donna McClure, for Glenn Martin, the Connor family, and for the Reverend Nancy Moffat. Reverend Nancy has just taken a call from a neighboring church. are and to help them. I know I'd like to pray a prayer I found in when I was going through some papers. It was written by Thomas Merton a long time ago. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I do not know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think that I'm following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does, in fact, please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may not know nothing about it. Therefore, will I trust always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen. We also give you thanks, O Lord, for those 12 boys and soccer coach who were rescued safely. Your mercies are new every morning. And each and every day you watch over us. And so now we stand as we say and pray together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness. 
to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Lord, we also pray this morning for Angela, Jeremiah, and Gavin. We ask that you wrap your arms tightly around them and keep them safe. As Gavin has just been born as an itsy bitsy teeny baby, and the mother and father are preparing to care for him. Give them, give the parents your strength so that you may help them be the parents that you would like them to be. And Lord, we raise up all of these petitions, those in our hearts, we raise them either aloud or silently. We pray the prayer of St. Chrysostom together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, you have given us grace, grace at this, this time with the one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come everlasting Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen.